Hey guys, what is up? My name is Alan and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at Driftmasters Virtual Championship Round 1. Now Driftmasters is actually a European Championship uh, based out of Europe. So uh, with that in mind, uh, it's quite cool that a real life Drift Championship has come to the sim world. Now I am one of the real life drivers, despite the fact, technically speaking, I am a sim driver when you look at it. But because I do compete in the real world and because I do have a DMEC or Driftmasters license, they threw me into the real life drivers. So because of that, it's all to play for and uh, yeah, for this event it was going to be super super tough, especially on the track layout that they have picked. Riga Latvia holds probably one of the most dangerous drift circuits in the world. Uh, Bikiniki is probably one of the most respected and like I said, dangerous drift tracks in the world. Uh, yeah, super fast, snappy transitions and a mad, mad wall at the very end. Initiation, you're required to run a very outside line right out towards that yellow line and maximize that zone all the way to the end. And then transition into the second outer zone, which you're going to be committed on full gas through the inner cable point and right out to the third outer zone. One thing to keep in mind is all that this next transition is actually set up from the time you initiate. So, so if you miss up initiation, it kind of messes you up for the remainder of the track. It's kind of like a weird domino effect. So you have to make sure that you get initiation right so that you can get the second transition done correctly. Once you transition from the middle of the track, you're going to go out into the fourth outer zone and then you have a quick decel uh, after the transition into the final wall zone. Now this wall again is super dangerous but it's the, actually the slowest part of the track. But it's super important that you commit your car to that wall so you can show to the judges that yeah, you are showing what it takes and that you have what it takes. So uh, with that in mind, let's have a look at our qualifying run and let's see what we got. So for our qualifying run, we ended up getting a 97 point run, which was freaking nuts. Uh, we were like nine points clear or something like that of the guys behind us. Uh, here we go, leaving from the start and through the chicane. Again, this track is super important, full gas from the initiation or from the chicane, through the initiation with a quick flick right out towards the other line, full gas here through the first transition into the second outer zone, through the inner clip point here again, full gas, third gear, hitting out rev limiter, uh, transitioning in the middle of the track to out to the fourth outer zone. Quick decel here on the hammer with the foot brake out towards the wall, and then again, full gas, second gear putting the wing out over the wall, really showing to the judges that we have what it takes to be at, uh, to, to qualify first. And that's the most important thing here. We're trying to get that first point qualifying run, that 97 point run that we got. Obviously, they qualify us in first place, but our second run, we ended up getting a 91. So with that in mind, uh, we had a pretty decent lead in the qualifying session. Uh, second place was Stephen Hatcher. I believe he got an 89. And third was Connor Shannon, who got a, an 88 or 89 as well. So um, yeah, out of the top three, there were two real life drifters. Uh, I say that because Conrad himself are a boat. Yes, we are real life drifters, but again, uh, we have been competing in the same for a number of years now, and therefore I kind of view myself, Connor, and maybe even Ka Pavel Karpolinski, who, will, who we will meet a little bit later on as the top real life sim drifters, does that make sense? So uh, let's have a look at our battles. Now, mind you, for our battles, because we did qualify first, we did end up getting a buy run in top 32, so I will not be showing that. There's no point. It's exactly the same as the qualifying run there. Well, it's not exactly the same, but it's pretty close. And so I think you guys get the idea. Let's hop straight into our top 16 battle. So for top 16, we ended up battling Christoph Dziadzon. Dziadzon. Uh, I'm sorry, Christoph, if you're watching this video. Uh, DZs are very hard for uh, <laughs> me to pronounce. So uh, yeah, Christoph, a great drifter as well. A VDC driver, I believe, also a DCGP guy as well. Uh, been competing against him for a number of years now. Uh, one of the issues that Christoph had um, was the fact that he couldn't actually see the start line lights go out. Uh, that was a little issue some people were having, so he was waiting for me to leave to know when to, to leave. And so because of that, we have a massive gap here on initiation. However, saying that, Christoph does a fantastic job to gain the proximity. He has to cut the track a lot to gain, but he maximizes the rest of this run. Look at this, right onto the door, we're gonna nail the transition nicely here. Again, right onto the door here. Our lead run here is pretty sweet, but he's doing a fantastic job to try and lead back any points that he can from that first initiation. Mistake. 
and uh, as across the line here he's all over me so uh, heading into this chase position uh, we end up having to restart this 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 uh yeah this, this starting procedure twice because unfortunately again he couldn't see the lights go out so he jumped and then he yeah so anyway initiating here again i make sure that i'm closer here at this point that that's that was the biggest deciding factor was the initiation point uh, if i was the same distance or further uh, from what christoph was when he was chasing us and uh, we probably would have gone one more time here because christoph did a way better in half of the circuit but i knew that that consistent proximity was going to win this battle he had a massive mistake in the chase position and even had a massive mistake on, on the his lead position as well uh, dropping a wheel out over the yellow line so it was important for me to to maximize the areas of where he was weak in his chase position and make sure that uh, we were better in those places to guarantee us the win ended up moving on into the top eight uh, we did enough in that situation and uh, yeah this next battle versus Christian Petrov uh, got very very interesting so as we leave the start line versus Christian Petrov through the chicane we go Christian obviously is a uh, again another VDC driver a lot of these guys are VDC drivers and a massive flick initiation here for us in the lead position again trying to do the same lead run that we didn't qualify my uh, my method uh, my my mentality all the time in competitions do the same lead run back to back you know, do what we need to do. Christian here doing a fantastic job in the straight, uh, chase position. Straightening up in certain places here and not the strongest finish to the chase run from him. I think it was obviously a mistake. Not the chase run that he probably would have wanted. But swapping positions here again. We just needed to have good, decent proximity all the way through. We didn't need to be any more aggressive, but we just need to be consistent. Um, so with that in mind, again, not as wide in the lead position as Christoph in the first outer zone. We match him for angle as best as we can through the whole uh, course. Um, Again, we're not running door to door here. We're keeping a bit of a distance. We don't need to run door to door. We'll bring the door to door when we have to. But for now, we're just going to keep a consistent proximity, make sure we're closer in the places that we need to be closer in um, to maximize our points and hopefully find an advantage in areas that he lost out on. So uh, we did him getting the win and moving on to the final four. And um, yeah, this was the start of some crazy battles. So for the final four, we ended up meeting Pavel Karpolinski, fellow real life driver, Drift Masters driver, but also sim driver as well. We've gone back to back many times with Drift Corner Grand Prix, but here we are in the lead position, maximizing the lead position here uh, in the first auto zone. A bit of a contact on the first transition, uh, didn't let that phase us. Power all the way through the first, uh, second transition, through the fourth outer zone, transition into the fifth outer zone, and Karpolinski is right there with us, door to door, all the way to the finish line. Uh, fantastic chase from there from Pavel, but we knew that he had that contact from us in the transition, so we just had to be cleaner. Uh, so we go to initiate here, I'm initiate nice and aggressively to, to maximize that area. We're actually wider than here in this place, but as we go through the first transition, um, door to door here, all the way through. Uh, going through the second transition again just maximizing the places that we can consistent proximity here is key the judges were looking for mimicking they weren't they didn't really necessarily care so much about door to door they wanted us to mimic which is slightly different chase uh, driving style versus other virtual championships and either uh, and either real life championships in the world i'm personally more used to the door to door stuff uh, in vdc and also in dcgp um, but I'm also used to the door-to-door -door stuff in real life as well in Ireland and in the UK. Uh, so it's a little bit of a different driving style and in this situation Drift Masters judges wanted us to mimic which is a more of American style style of judging. Personally, I prefer the door-to-door -door stuff. I think it looks way better than the mimicking. I understand the mimicking logic but I just, I don't know, I just don't think it looks as good and I think anyone watching the stream would agree with me that door-to-door uh, looks more impressive if someone's able to do door to door consistently throughout the run of course they should win it's way way harder mimicking uh, is an easy way out of chase driving um, it does look nice if they're timing everything correctly but it's a very specific style of chase driving and only uh, only a certain percentage of people really like it I think most of the audience really do prefer door to door uh, drift driving but that's my personal opinion make sure to put it down in the comment section below what do you prefer do you prefer you know front wheel to back wheel child chase driving with same transition timing or do you prefer door to door uh, really showing the aggression um, and not really having that uh, same dancing mimicking feel uh, either way we end up getting well there versus Pavel Karpolinski apologies for a bit of a, 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 a bit of a rant or a bit of a, uh, a bit of a talk there but we're moving on into the finals and this is where uh, I suppose for us, we, we end up meeting Stephen Hatcher who qualified second. We should watch the run and see what happens because it, it does, yeah, it, it does get a little interesting. 
So here we go, Levin Starlin versus Stephen Hatcher in his Mazda RX-8. Stephen is actually an ex-VDC champion, and so he's a force to be reckoning with. But unfortunately, he makes a massive mistake in an entry. He did tell me here um, after our battle that you know he he knew we were one of the fastest cars in the straight line, and that we're very quick to the first corner. So he he really took a massive risk. He said, look, he's nothing to lose, um, and so he wanted to get onto the door from the get-go. And unfortunately, the car just washed out a tiny bit more, uh, put a wheel into the grass, and then sent them spiraling off into the wall. So in positions all I had to do was just you know be there just not make any mistake but if you look at this first transition here watch this and it looked a bit of a weird slaughter from uh, from Steven it kind of watches him wide we didn't actually end up touching there he had a bit of a lag spike at that point um, yeah so I was kind of hoping that the judges could spot that because that is obviously a fairly big mistake if I did touch him we could even argue that maybe I did lag into him but unfortunately or unfortunately for us we didn't mean uh, that didn't happen and because of that well we ended up getting the win for round one of virtual Drift championship or Drift Masters virtual championship was freaking awesome I really really was stoked of course not the way that you went, want to win a battle you obviously want to battle it out with the second best guy or, or the you know the best guy on that day the best virtual guy on that day but uh but we're lucky that it worked out in our favor and um yeah i'm pretty stoked with that uh awesome event drift master virtual championship thank you so much for the invite as a real driver of course i do have my opinions uh you know should i be a sim drifter probably but uh, at the end of the day it was a fantastic event i really enjoyed it and i hope we brought you guys a fantastic show the live stream production was amazing so credit to the guys uh, it, it gives us kind of a great motivation, I suppose, as sim drivers and even organizers of virtual championship to kind of aim for. Of course, drift masters uh, have a bigger budget, I suppose you could say, and much more resources to be able to do more high quality live stream. Uh, and but you have to give credit to the likes of VDC, EDC, and the other virtual championships out there that are privately kind of owned and they're kind of only doing it for the fun and still manage to get a good show to us crowds uh, watching it on the live stream. So. Uh, with that in mind, we will be back again this weekend for Virtual Drift Championship Round 4 at Ladrina, Brazil. Uh, again, we will be streaming during the week. Make sure to give us a follow, uh, subscribe, hit the YouTube uh, subscribe button down below and give us a follow. Maybe you like this competition stuff. If you'd like to see more, we've got plenty more planned. We've got a lot of weeks, weekends of drifting ahead of us. And um, yeah, with that, there's not much more else to say other than say goodbye to you guys. So thank you so much for watching this video. And we'll talk to you guys very soon. Cheers and goodbye. Fourth, Pavel Korpolinski. Until then, we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.